So we're going to talk a little bit about architecture and construction, and then we're also going to talk about archaeology. Now, those are all some big words, but they're kind of fun. So first, architecture. That's what St. Paul is talking about in the first reading. He's giving us a spiritual architecture. Now, architecture is when people design buildings, and it's really exciting. I know some of your parents are involved in designing buildings. And uh, the first thing you have to do when you want to design a building is you have to dream. You have to picture in your mind's eye what you want that building to look like. And then you start to put down on paper what you want to have happen inside that building. And so when you're designing, you keep both of those things in mind, kind of the picture of what the final product looks like and how you want it to function. And in big words, we call that form and function. Well, St. Paul gives us a spiritual architecture of form and function. And form, first of all, he says, you know, our spiritual home should look like Jesus. That's our spiritual home. And so when we picture Jesus in our mind's eye, of course, we start to picture the different qualities of Jesus in our mind's eye. We, we picture that Jesus was loving. We picture that Jesus was compassionate. He always felt for other people. You know, there's so many times when Jesus would look out and he would see other people and his heart would be moved for them because he knew either that they were sad or they were hungry or they were hurting or they were sick and his heart would move for them. So when we picture Jesus in our mind, we, we picture all of those qualities about Jesus. And then when we think about the function, and that's what St. Paul says, the function of Jesus as our spiritual home is that it helps us to become more like Jesus. That when we spend time with Jesus, when we spend time in our spiritual home, that it helps us more and more to be like Jesus. And that's why St. Paul says that Jesus is the capstone. So if you want to figure out what that means, if you see any of these arches, so you know those half circles that are all around the church? So the very center of those half circles is usually what's called the capstone because in ancient times when you would build an arch, a half circle like that, you would have to have a really important stone in the middle to balance the weight of the arch. And it's that middle stone that keeps the whole arch suspended in the air like that. And because we call Jesus the capstone, it's reminding us that without Jesus in our lives, everything falls down. Everything just hits the floor because we don't have the one thing that holds everything up. And that's what a capstone is. And so St. Paul tells us that Jesus is that capstone that makes everything else in our life fit in its right place. And that's really important because when we talk about the dedication of a cathedral, we look at this big, beautiful building, we go, wow, God is really here. And that's absolutely true. But you know, the fun thing about archaeology is it helps us to understand things that were really, really a long time ago. And there's this one church in Rome that I love. It's probably one of my favorite churches. It's called the Church of St. Clement. In Italian, it's San Clemente. And the reason why it's one of my favorite churches is because St. Clement was a pope. He was a pope really close to St. Peter. So he came in line not too long after St. Peter was our first pope. And St. Clement lived in a house. And so below this beautiful basilica of St. Clement is a church that was built in about the 1300s, so somewhere around the 1300s. And then even further below that is St. Clement's house because that's where the Christian community gathered in Rome when St. Clement was the pope. He invited everybody to his house to come and pray together because we didn't have big churches like this at the time. Christians were very, very small and very, very poor. And so they gathered together in houses. And so one of the first churches in Rome was the house of St. Clement. And so underneath this beautiful, beautiful church building is this simple little house where the Christian community gathered together to pray to God. And the reason why I love that is because it reminds us that God wants to come to our house. 
And that's what we hear in the gospel today with the reading about Zacchaeus. You know, Zacchaeus was kind of short. He, he wasn't really, really tall. And you probably experience this sometimes too. You know, when you're in a crowd of big people, you can't really see well, can you? Right? Because all the big people are standing in front of you and all you see is big people. You don't see anything past that. Well, Zacchaeus had the same problem. He was kind of small and so he couldn't see what was going on, but he wanted to see Jesus. And so even though he was a really important person, he climbed up a tree, which really important adult persons don't usually do. That's kind of embarrassing. It'd be kind of like watching, uh, you know, President Biden climb up a tree. That would look kind of funny. People would go, what is he doing? Well, Zacchaeus didn't care because he wanted to see Jesus so much, he was willing to embarrass himself so that he could see Jesus. And he did. And not only did he see Jesus, but Jesus looked at him and he said, Zacchaeus, I want to come to your house. And you know what's great about that is Jesus says that to all of us. He looks at each one of us and he says, I want to come to your house. And what he means by that is not our physical houses. Jesus wants to be in our houses too, but he wants to be in the house of our bodies. He wants to be in our spiritual temple of the Holy Spirit. He wants to be in our lives every single day. And that's why whenever we celebrate a big church or a little church, we also celebrate the church of our house, our spiritual house. And that's us because God wants to dwell in each of us. And so before we ever come worship in this beautiful house of prayer, we also need to worship in this beautiful house of prayer inside ourselves where we talk to Jesus in our hearts, where we hear the scriptures from the Bible, where we know that God wants to be close to each one of us. And so today's a great day. It's a great day to celebrate this beautiful gift of this beautiful cathedral, but it's also an important day to celebrate the beautiful gift of each of our lives where God wants to come and stay with us.